So welcome to the 2015 NASA Ames uh, Summer Series. If you look at NASA, you see lots of great achievements. You usually think of missions, missions to Mars, mission exploring other planets, or what used to be planets like Pluto, currently in the news. What we miss is behind all of that is lots of different expertise, not just science and technology expertise. It really takes a group of lots of professionals to achieve the greatness that we achieve as an agency and as a nation. Also, as we develop and build what NASA will do in the future, it is really important to take lessons learned from the people who have come before us. Today's talk, entitled Taking the Rear View Mirror Test and Passing with Flying Colors, will be given by Chuck Duff, NASA Ames Director of Center Operations. Chuck started his career at the US Air Force as a civilian. And he started as a contract specialist in California and then moved on to Washington, Maryland and Washington, and became a, pro a procurement analyst. Within that time span of eight years, he rose to actually being the sole Air Force action officer responsible for developing, coordinating, and implementing Air Force actions relative to a Department of Justice ill-wind ill procurement fraud investigation. And after that, he saw the light and said, let me go join NASA. <laughs> and so he spent the last 20 or so years here working for NASA, first started at Washington, D.C., then came to NASA Ames Research Center, where he's right now uh, the director of center operations. During that time, he did decide to go to uh, DC for a little stint of a detail. He has many certificates and awards that came through his career. Uh, one, for example, is the NASA Exceptional Achievement Medal for Service as deputy center director here when he was the acting center director. Please join me in welcoming Chuck Duff. Thank you, Vic. Appreciate it. Well, it's apparent that uh, my friendship dues to Jacob are due at the moment right now, so I will settle up with you afterwards, Jacob. Uh, thank you for that kind of introduction. Uh, as Jacob said, uh, a lot of the talks that are given in the summer series are covering a lot of different technical areas and the like. I would like to submit that, as Jacob pointed out, technical areas are not just science, math, and engineering. There's a lot of folks behind the scenes and right in the middle of the scenes, often in the forefront, that pull it off. And uh, so some of these lessons are actually, I'm gonna to touch on a little bit of that as I go. Uh, Jacob, well, why don't we go to the next slide. Uh, first things first, snapshots. And I say it'll be a little bit different than, than the normal. It, it is a chance to chat. Like I say, it's about things like relationships. And it's about the people you know. And it's about what you stand for. That it often makes the backbone of the things that we do at NASA possible. It takes a whole team. The most important person on the planet that day at NASA could be the human resources specialist who's hiring the scheduler for a program that can't move forward without it. It could be someone in facilities. It could be someone in security. In our fire department, it could be anywhere in public relations. It takes a whole team. And I think it's really important to, to emphasize that point. Uh, believe me, I'm not one for regrets at all. Uh, the woulda, shoulda, coulda uh, team, uh, that, that one I'm not on. Uh, there's only uh, get on it, get with the program, and make some decisions as you go. And uh, what I've tried to do today is I'm going to share a combination of some of my experiences with uh, what I refer to as the rules. Now, I don't know if there are any fans in the audience of uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. They, what was it, parlay? They said it's, they're more like guidelines. Actually, they should be applied in moderation, as I'll point out, with the exception of only one, and that'll be the first one. So with that, why don't we go ahead and launch into it? 
And I'm going to bounce around my career. Uh, Jacob made some references uh, to various places I've been over time. And uh, I've, so we're not going to do this chronologically, OK? We're going to use the rules as the backdrop. So bear with it. If, at the end, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those uh, about why did I do what I did at that time or what have you. I'm, I'm all game. No, no questions are uh, off the table today. The first one, I think it goes without saying, OK? Uh, it's up to all of us to own it, right? You have to own your integrity. No one can take it away. You can only give it away. Many of you probably heard like expressions. I happen to really, really, really believe it, okay? And I think it also builds the basis and the backbone for the structure of who you are, what you stand for, what you believe in, and by the way, how you're going to apply that in a way that allows you and your missions to be successful, okay? So at the end of the day, the reference to ill wind, uh, Jacob made a reference to that. Believe it or not, yes, I did have on uh, many a uh, foggy night down at the old torpedo factory, and I kid you not, uh, meetings with gentlemen in trench coats with brimmed hats under the foggy light, talking about things that people did, and I was on a team that helped uh, make sure that that didn't continue. Uh, what was happening was people, I hate to say it this way, government, senior government officials were selling their soul. Uh, giving away source selection information and the like uh, to other contractors and the like uh, for personal gain. I know it sounds like uh, I'm, a, I'm an attorney in an ethics briefing. Believe me, it'll get a little lot more fun after this, but the point was, believe me, I learned an awful lot about me, about people, about the integrity of the process, and how valuable that is. Um, it gave me no great pleasure to be part of, of, of a team that actually caused people to have to go to jail. That, that wasn't a highlight for me. That part wasn't. What was is that the process really took the opportunity to learn and, and correct itself in ways that, that actually improved it. But it was an amazing um, experience actually going through that kind of relationship. Here I am, a, a contracts guy at the time. What the heck are you doing involved in that kind of thing? Well, it was because we needed, uh, I, I, I call it my Gilligan's Island tour, uh, for those in the audience old enough to recall. Um, the three hour cruise, I actually went to Washington, D.C for, uh, to work at Andrews Air Force Base, and I'll talk about that in a sec. But the bottom line is I ended up at the Pentagon for about four years instead of three weeks. So learned an awful lot working for a two-star general at the time and uh, about organizing, about working with people, about multi-agency interactions, all the services. It was really quite an, an amazing experience, but at the core of it, rule number one applies. Rule number two, um, <laughs> be true to yourself. Uh, believe me, uh, that one I was with the Air Force that Jacob mentioned for about eight years. Uh, that rule, uh, this one comes to mind and I apply this example because it was one of the hardest decisions I made in my life and that was to actually leave the Air Force. I had no reason to leave. I loved it. I was on a great path, working on amazing programs. There were things I was getting to do that most would never have the opportunity. But NASA calls and said, hi, how about you come our way? And when I sat and looked at it, I said, hey, I, I, this, this just looks too interesting. It was about civilian space rather than military space. It was about cost reimbursable and, and university work and research work rather than large weapon systems procurement. So again, there was this large void in, in experience I didn't have. And believe me, it was really hard walking into my two bosses' offices and saying, I've, had, I've been offered this opportunity, I think I'm going to take it. And, and that was Ira Kemp and uh, John Slinkard, and two heroes in my life, uh, amazing, amazing people. So, uh, but I made the choice. Uh, and now, at the, at not the expense of others, well, some people, wait a minute, you left. Well, maybe they wanted you gone. Uh, hopefully not, wasn't the case. But the point is that uh, how you avoid the expense part, especially in a, while you're employed, is to really, really give it your all while you're there. In other words, spend the time and, and invest. You know, and you'll see another rule called give more than you take. Take those experiences and, and actually sit down and give it your all while you're there. So tough decision, but it's been amazing. And here, you know, 20 years later, I'm, you know, with NASA still, and uh, it's been an amazing experience. Ironically, I do still do work with the Air Force, actually in the same program areas I did when I started my career, which is really, really, really cool. So I get to, I'm kind of closing a circle beginning and an end as I get ready to retire here. Okay, Jacob. All right, never give up, never surrender. This is a really easy one, okay? I have to attribute 
Never Surrender to Galaxy Quest. I mean, one of those highly technical movies, uh, you know, but the kids loved it. And uh, I always told them, never give up. Then Courtney, of course, my daughter, jumps in, never surrender. And we go, good for you, Court. And same with Carl. So the key to this one is, any of you ever been told no to something you wanted before? Especially as you're looking for a job. I was a graduate of Whitman College. Uh, actually, had more hours in my first major, which is economics, until I switched it to political science with, an, science with an emphasis in international security affairs with a thesis on MX missile system basing options. I'm a really interesting guy, aren't I? Um, anyway, it's, uh, what happened was, is I was committed to actually going to pursue a, just, not just a career in business, but I love, I've always loved my spaceships and airplanes. No matter how you wanted to fit into that community, and I don't fit in, like I say, from the technical side, even though I'm an armchair engineer, the, the fact remains that it took me about 18 months of a lot of no. If I had been a computer scientist in 1981, I'd have had 20 job offers on the spot. But I wasn't a computer scientist, and no, and no, and no, and no again. I didn't take no for an answer. That didn't happen. I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm not just going to do generic. I'm not going to settle. Well, fortunately, it worked out. Uh, someone decided to take a chance, and uh, as they say, the rest is history. So never give up, never surrender. OK, uh, do, what you say you're, do what you say you're going to do. Uh, this, uh, I threw ATL, BTL in because I had to, because there's only a couple people in the room know what it means. It means above the line, below the line. And it's a budgeting tool, basically an you know, uh, activity-based costing tool to try to track what's tantamount to about a $150 million uh, budget that I manage. Uh, I don't manage it. My chiefs, several of which are in the audience, do. Jim, actually, my deputy, he, he really takes care of it. But the concept behind it is that we run a complex spend in center operations. We, Jim and I, uh, have about half of the center's institutional money here. So it's our job and our responsibility to make sure that money is well spent and that we can explain it. So we said we're going to do what we said we were going to do. Let's show people what we did. So we actually built a system that actually has helped our customers, our clients, uh, all understand when they give us a dollar, what, what the heck we're doing it. And by the way, what kind of process did we use to, to actually understand that that was the best spend, not the perfect spend, but the best, uh, given all things considered that we knew at that moment. And by the way, it's highly dynamic, so we continue to adapt, don't we, Jim? Absolutely. All right, so let's move on. Okay, I, I'm a consummate learner. Well, I try to be. Um, it means continuing to go back to school uh, over my career. One thing about NASA that makes it one of the, if I'd argue, the greatest organization in the government, maybe in the country, is that it is a huge advocate and proponent of people wanting to learn. And I think that that is huge. I've had the opportunity to, uh, I've been to Harvard six times. You know, and I, there's just been a number of different opportunities that, that where you get exposed to things that you would not otherwise get exposed to. NASA, it's SES, it's Senior Executive Service Candidate Development Program, is second to none in the government. So for those of you who are coming up the ranks, uh, pay attention to things like the Mid-Level Leadership Program, NASA First, and others. There's people in this audience today that have been through those programs. And believe me, take it for all it's worth, okay? So keep learning, never lose that thirst to learn because that's what keeps motivating you, gives you that new perspective, refreshes you. It's just a wonderful, wonderful tool and no, nobody beats NASA in that. Take us for everything we're worth. Rule number six, extra 5% of effort often defines the difference between excellence and mediocrity, okay? I actually use that a lot. Uh, if you wanna know the real test that I use, I attribute it to my uh, Uncle Carl, uh, for whom our son is named, uh, and that test is uh, the short departure will be, he had a son going into seventh grade, Michael. Michael was going to play basketball. Carl wanted to make sure that he could put up a basketball hoop so he could practice on, in, the, in the garage area. That sounds great. Okay, so enter me. I walk in, I've got a sky crane, I-beams, big trucks, concrete mixers, footings ready to go in. Okay, there's mine. Then there's Uncle Carl. Have any bubble gum? If we need it, any duct tape? 
And that was his version of it. And so what I do is I use the Uncle Carl test and everything I make, every decision I make, which is, wait a minute, I know, and Jim will attest to this, I overdo everything out of the start anyway, at least that's where it starts, but I apply the Carl Frankie test uh, and immediately and quickly finding myself adjusting on the continuum. So there's Carl and there's me, and usually every decision you make is going to drop somewhere on that continuum. So I, you look, we all think we're bright and intelligent and we just know what to do. Well, we're gonna get to that in a minute too, but the point is uh, apply your own version of the Carl Frankie test. I think you'll find it helpful. Uh, believe it or not, Bubble gum may be just the right fix. And like I say, I got Jim and Rhonda and Jean and everybody to make sure, you know, that I stay to the bubble gum end whenever possible. Uh, but uh, it's well worth, uh, worth exploring. Okay, interesting. Perfection is the enemy of close enough. You'll note the reference to the prior rule. These two rules, six and seven, actually give you the Carl Frankie test, okay, which is take your situation some things absolutely, I mentioned this ill wind thing, it required perfection on almost every point. Almost on every point, there was no room for error. Other things we do, the same level of rigor, the same cost, the investment level, the stress, no. You've got to know how to pick and choose between them. So six and seven, use them kind of against each other uh, is kind of the way I look at it. Go ahead. All right. Life is a clock, and by the way, it doesn't stop for the two-minute warning and everything else, right? It keeps ticking. So, the reality is, you better decide as you're fussing through something, or you're quibbling, or you're going to be mad at somebody, or whatever have you. That minute's not retrievable. It's kind of like a hotel room, it's right, it's a perishable quantity, attribute. So that's where we kind of have to step back, go out of body, no fear every once in a while. Even if, and I do it, I'm wrong a lot. Um, you have to try to have the gumption to stand up and say, wait, wait a minute, can we reset? Can we reset? I, I, just, I just screwed that up, you know. But could we reset? And that takes a relationship to do that. And we'll get to that too. Use the information available to you. Well, how about you're driving through Europe and, uh, you know, the sign says this, but your instinct says that. Well, hmm, what's the GPS say? No, oh, just kidding. But the point is there should be a lot of data you'll get. Use it. You know, what was that? Uh, Bruce Almighty. Can I quote that here? Bruce Almighty, would, give me a sign. Remember the truck goes in front of him and it's full of road signs? Just give me a sign. You know, they're there on almost everything you run into, there are signs. And by the way, a lot of them come from your friends, colleagues, and family. Pay attention. It matters because uh, perspective doesn't matter where you sit, by the way. It doesn't make someone else right and you wrong. But we'll get to that too. All right. Nobody, give more than you take. My dad always said nobody likes a taker. Uh, let me tell you, that's so true. That also comes at some personal risk, right? That means, uh, you, you know, you probably overdo it sometimes and maybe pick up bills or whatever that you shouldn't do or whatever. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's better to be a giver than a taker. And there, I've, I've run into both. Um, most people are actually a hybrid, which is the right answer, right? But I, I happen to err in the camp of it's better to give than to take. So uh, I, I practice that in some regards to a fault maybe in some areas, but it is, you know, your friends, they need, your friends and family have to know you're there for them, no matter what, be there for them, because it, that's, that's all they have, that's all you have. Okay, lob, even though some might accuse me, I think I have it, I can assure you, I do not. Lock on brilliance, uh, uh, uh. I have another expression I like to use, which is an idea plus another idea almost always makes for a better idea. Many of you who have worked with me over the years have heard me say it. And I think you all know I mean it. But am I ever bashful? Uh, do I have an opinion on about everything? Probably to a fault. But nonetheless, I also like to use that as a way to start a conversation. Because if it starts with me opening my mouth and it ends with me closing my mouth, 
I guarantee you it's only got an X percent small chance of being anything worth a hoot. It's way better when I take something I got to say and put it with Ingrid or put it with Steve or put it with Gene or any of you all out here. You know, it's way better when we take the ideas and assemble them because out of those are going to become a much, much better ideas. And that's another thing that makes NASA great. And one of the things I've been really happy to watch over the last, particularly over the last decade, is NASA, to say each center has its own culture is, is absolutely true, absolutely true. I would argue we all have it sometimes to a fault. But what I've been so happy to watch, particularly over the last decade, as I mentioned, is how teaming, nothing anymore in this world gets done without a team, nothing. You can try and jam something through on your own, you'll get to some level of success, but I wonder if you'll make it all the way. I'd be willing to bet against that. That I've been watching the centers you know, participate on each other's teams, understand each other's roles and responsibilities, and step up and actually work together. And by the way, it starts at home. I'm talking about home at Ames, about institution and program. As I mentioned, the most important person that day could be that HR person I use as an example. You don't get that schedule, your program does not move forward. You don't get that contract award. You don't get that facility upgraded. You don't get the, the protective services officers out there guarding that test. It doesn't happen. It takes a team. So we'll go on from there. Uh, okay. <laughs> We've all been surrounded by all kinds of colorful personalities over our lives. And uh, believe me, I, I, I probably, well, no, I definitely am in the camp of, I will have an opinion. I'll probably be really strong about it, probably too strong sometimes. But one thing I've always tried not to do is I don't yell, I don't scream, I don't get upset. I might be firm, but I think that what we do is we owe it to ourselves and those around us to actually, if you've got, if you've got something to say, you should say it. Everyone has the right to say it whatever that is on their mind. But I think it's got to, whether, in, in whatever environment you want to put that in. Um, the fact remains that uh, in this example, the one I was going to use was I, I was kind of upset because I was a GS-7 uh, at Space Division down in LA. They asked me to take on the job of being the uh, contracting officer for a billion dollar program as a GS-7. Well, there was another individual that was for the spacecraft bus side of the defense support program, which is now open to talk about, that uh, the other person, we had a sensor side. So you had the bus and the sensor came together as a space vehicle, right? Well, it wasn't really working out on the sensor side. So they came to me and guess, guess what? You got the sensor too. I'm going, okay, really? People, can't people do their jobs? I mean, wait a minute. I had a choice to make. Get all upset about it and carry on and flail, and I said, no, no, sure, I'll do it. And we did it. The only Air Force multi-year contract, billion and a half, two billion dollars. And the fact that the government trusts us to do that, it also means you have to work in a team. So stand up, even in the situations you run into every once in a while, which upsets you, and by the way, probably justly, probably justly, ask yourself before the old, I have to vent first and then I'm fine model? No. No, it doesn't really help the team. So think about it. And by the way, you should always feel that you can discuss those kinds of situations. I did. I went and talked to the senior procurement officer uh, responsible for the program and said, I, you know, I'll do it. Okay, this is what it's going to take to do it if you want me to do this and that. And we sat down in a conversation. It was really quite good. And, and in the end, it all worked out. We came in ahead of schedule. We saved more money than anyone could have ever thought. And off it went. So, there we go. Next. All right. <laughs> Before you all came in, there was the, the, I love these guys. And that's why I come over. They always have Star Wars music on, right? I'm a huge Star Wars fanatic. In fact, the license plate on my, uh, my motorcycle is RTDII. And it stands for, though it's an RT, BMW RT bike. And I'm Duff the second. So, and actually the name came from the kids that we were working on on the robotics program. And the first robotics, uh, or my son was on, on the team. And they named the bike because they knew I loved Star Wars so much. And so they said, why don't you call it RTD2? I'm going, good thinking. So I did, out on my bike, that's the license plate. 
And, uh, you know, there really is, the rule is do or do not, there is no try. In the end of the day, remember six and seven now, remember rule six and seven, perfection is enemy close enough versus extra 5%. But at the end of the day, on the important things, do or do not, there is no try, really. And that's in relationships, that's in your day-to-day -day -day job, that's in setting goals for yourself, right? It's, it's who are you as a person. And in the end of the day, deliver when it matters, okay? All right, John Mellencamp. I'm also a huge uh, music guy. Happen to love John Cougar. Uh, the record company wouldn't let him use his real name, Mellencamp, until his second album um, because he was so successful. Uh, but uh, stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Actually, my son used this line in writing one of his best college uh, essays ever written. Uh, I've read a few of them. And uh, it was really kind of an interesting backdrop for, you know, take a position. People don't have to agree with you. They don't have to even like it. But take a position and, and support it. And then, by the way, how about you listen to the other people's positions and maybe you find out that there's a lot of merit to their argument as well. And again, welcome to an idea plus another idea. So, as you'll see, there's a lot of relationship between all these things. So, all right. Levers and decisions, okay? There's the levers and decisions part, and then there's the serenity prayer. <laughs> For those of you who probably all know it, you know, give me the grace to uh, deal with the things I can deal with and, and to not worry about those that I cannot. Now, that's a terrible destruction of the real words, but that's the essence of it. But on the other side is, welcome to use the information available to you. That's the same kind of thing. But in, in the end, though, ideas are only ideas. They're only as good as the idea. And by the way, they'll probably be forgotten in the next 20 minutes. But there are levers you can pull, both in your, whether it be in your personal finances, whether it be in, in how you treat your, your family, be it how you deliver on your work assignments, okay? It all does matter. And you do have more control than you think you do. Make the choice to believe that you have levers that you can pull, identify them, and then pull them. And if you're wrong, reset and do it again. Assess what went wrong and do it again. But make decisions. There's nothing worse than the armchair quarterback, right? The Monday morning person that comes in and says, well, they should have done this. They may have that would have, could have, should have stuff. That's the, that's the deal that many of us face. Well, wait a minute. I have no respect for any of that. Don't tell me what I would have, could have, should have done. Or No, no, no. Get in here and help. Get in here. You got something to say? Bring it. You know? Let's just sit down and have a chat about what it all means. And let's put all of our ideas together on the table. All right. 16. By the way, you should probably know that the order that these rules were written, the first rule, honesty and integrity at all times, right? The next rule that I wrote was 17. I'm going to get that in a minute. I'll explain that in a minute. But 16 kind of became the backdrop of the talk, which was take the rearview mirror test. Now, a lot of people would instantly assume what that means is well, what did I do, and whatever is done is done, right? I would argue it is 180 off of that. And the way you do it is you use the rearview mirror test as a predictive tool. Before you make a decision, I talked about leaving the Air Force to go to NASA. I used 16, okay, to say, all right, don't think. Ask yourself, I now left the Air Force. I'm, I'm it says six months or a year into NASA. What do I think about it? Don't think about it. What's your gut tell you? For me, I said, you know what? I'm good with it. I think it's going to work out fine. I didn't even left the Air Force yet. I think the key was that you use it as a predictive test. If you go, you go, oh, God, I don't, you better think twice about making the decision. Use that tool as a predictive tool, not as one that discusses your fate, okay? It's very much, to me, a, a prospective effort. It's not a, I, I don't look back. I, there's nothing I'd change. Uh, I, almost 32 years, and I wouldn't change a thing in my career. Not one minute. Now, would I say that some of the days, particularly in center operations, right, Steve? We could probably do without. But you know what? At the end of the day, I've never seen organizations, whether it's in that one, or when I was working with Mike and David over in Safety and Mission Assurance, or when I was working in procurement where Kelly is now. I, at the end of the day, we work through everything. We, there's, we've never let the center down, never let the agency down, despite 
you know, shrinking budgets and the like. Uh, how could someone not be thrilled to have had the opportunity to work in that kind of environment? How could you not be? And then, never mind, look at all the te technical successes and failures. And I look at how we learn from that. So it's very, very cool. So use a rumor test. All right, the two in the picture there, they're the culprits that, well, they're now 22 and 25. Uh, they're the ones that use this rule against me with the most force and effect of anyone on the planet. So I'd say, what did you do that for? Da, 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 da. And they said, Dad, rule 17. And they'd come up with some eloquent rationale and have to, can't argue with that. Can't argue with that. Because that's actually where most great ideas come from, is by actually thinking in a non-linear, non-standard way. I'm sure a lot of folks probably consider me to be a very linear thinker. I can assure you, it's very much not that way. Uh, I prefer actually to think about the wackiest stuff, and even if it's the old bridge too far, bring it back in, bring it back in. Use that tool because it's, that is how we actually solve most things, is through this particular tool, and that's why it got created second, okay? All right, at the end of the day, this is the last one, okay? At the end of the day, as I said, I've mentioned a little bit about team in this talk at a few points. Trust me, uh, it isn't what you know. Oh yeah, it is actually. You better be a respected subject matter expert, discipline expert, or a person who can cl collect those positions and, uh, and, and use them in the team. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, that was, it was just who you know, and it's kind of said disparagingly. I argue it's very positive. Why? Because with great and strong relationships comes credibility. And believe me, I've been in more than one situation where my job brought an issue to it uh, that uh, I have no idea how it happened or why it happened or even what we're going to do about it yet. And the phone would ring. It would be NASA headquarters or whatever. Ah, da, 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 da. And you know what? We'd, we'd be able to sit, just sit and talk and they said, you know, we know you'll work it. And then the phone would hang up. And that'd be it. Never hear from him again. Why? Because then the relationships locally kick in. We just sit down and we work it. Then we close the loop that we took care of it. And, and off you go. But most of it's done because people actually know you, trust you. Okay? That, you know, who are you? What do you stand for? Okay? Well, this has been my little collection of uh, rules, but let me say there's some enveloping of that, and that's what the little fine print is about, okay? The, my own words about, uh, about rule one, it, it, there's no deviation, right? It, it applies, okay? And by the way, once you go down the slope, you may or may not be able to get back. And uh, so keep that in mind. The cross-cutting principles, um, this was also something that kind of came to mind as a result of kids, for those that have them. When they start getting older, especially, where's the, could I have a few bucks and where are the car keys? You know, uh, we always had an expression, Beth and I did, we said, have fun, be safe, right? Make good decisions, right? That kind of thing. The last two is, I, we expected them to, to ask themselves those two questions. Are you going to be safe? And are the people around you going to be? Okay, so I mean that, that's kind of what, what surrounds them. Okay, all right, last area. A few uh, tidbits to sum up. I don't even know how I'm doing on time. All right, uh, do become an expert. In whatever your chosen field is, it matters not. Get noticed by delivering product, by taking on more responsibility than your pay grade. Welcome to the US government, by the way. Uh, each position does offer new opportunities. Seize them. They're yours to lose, right? I took that one from Lou Braxton, my old boss in center ops. He and I were awesome together. Being willing to move. Uh, Beth had to uh, tolerate the game of Pong. I've uh, been to was in, in LA, got uh, uh, brought to Washington, D.C. Ames brought me back. Headquarters tried to get me back again. Beth said, no way am I staying. Just kidding. 
Uh, she was right, by the way. Um, awesome job, op awesome opportunity, but what that did is open the door to the center operations world when I came back. Everything does work out for a reason. Take a chance. Always, always, always watch each other's backs, okay? Okay, that's what we're here to do at the end of the day. Share what you've learned. Last thing I'm gonna, last story I'll share before I get off the stage. Uh, I've been for the last uh, six years doing volunteer work and in a little rural town called Emmett, Idaho. Uh, the SES is at the center, go out and do volunteer work. We have, I've been with that school, like I say, almost six years. Mike Liu uh, goes with me on those trips, uh, as does Brian Smith, where we work with uh, K through 12. And I'll tell you, you've never seen a community more grateful. So we may that give more you to take kind of thing. Believe me, there, I'm, I'm taken from them based on the experience and the exposure and the commitment. When you have 414 students in the classroom and 598 come to, to family night, what does that tell you about a little 6,000 person city, little town? Don't tell me they don't have a grade out in the little areas in this country. They do. They do and they should be applauded. Last, I'll close with this. Always, always, always tell the truth. No matter how ugly, um, even if, if I screw up completely, I will stand up and say it. Do the same. Uh, with that, I'd like to thank uh, Jacob for the opportunity and uh, for all of you for joining me today, and I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you. So if you have any questions, please line up in the aisle and uh, we'll take your question. So while we wait for somebody to get up and have a question, I will ask you a question. So one of the things that I have in my career is looking at the balance of deciding when to stick it out in that position and when to move forward to an outside location. Uh, what I saw in your career is this back and forth from California to Washington, which in my career so far I did once, right? Going California, Washington, and back, and so on. In each particular position, did the opportunity come first, or were you searching for something as you were looking at it through your career? Uh, to, be, to be blunt, my dad had another expression, uh, be sought after, because looking is really hard. Um, trust me, he's right. I explained how upfront it took me a long time to actually weasel my way into the aerospace business. Uh, I was very fortunate, Jacob. I haven't looked for a job since I got hired. And the phone would ring, like the Air Force called, you know, and then all of a sudden NASA calls the Air, you know, me at the Air Force, and then I'm out here, and then the out here calls NASA if I come out to a center. So the flipping of center and headquarters experience uh, has been intensely valuable, but it's really been at the, at the behest of, of others. I can take no credit uh, for that. They, they've taken a chance on me. So I, I can't thank all of them enough. Tom Lidke in particular, and, and DC, and, and there are many, many others. Going back to your, uh, your first rule, I imagine people will find themselves in a situation, whether they're working at a NASA center, Air Force, uh, private industry, where the leadership is perhaps trying to lead them astray, whether it be you know, a center manager, a general, uh, a CEO. And what would you advise somebody to do when, they're, when rule number one tells them to go one direction? and their leadership t tells them to go in a different one, and the consequences can be dire. So what would you say to somebody in that, in that sta uh, situation? Well, a pretty, pretty easy answer for me. I remember delivering a paper. We got called at five o'clock on a Wednesday. Sam Nunn and the Arms, Senate and Armed Services wanted to have our uh, associate or uh, deputy uh, assistant secretary of defense to come testify and be due cost control the next morning at 10. So uh, at two in the morning, I'm delivering a paper uh, to him on, on one aspect of that. He looks at it, throws it down on his desk and says, get out of here, this is terrible. You know, uh, and you know, it, what, what I did is came back another hour and he said, where was this an hour ago? And this guy was amazing. Um, probably the most brilliant man is John Slinker, General John Slinker, Major General. Uh, and, but what he also long always said was, I pay you to think. That was the essence of that story in the paper. Where was this an hour ago? I pay you to think. So, two rules on that. Think, okay, but then how you deliver your dissenting view. Many of you who work with me know that that is also absolutely vital to me. 
you can disagree with me until the cow comes home. I don't bother me at all. Now, if someone starts getting all emotional or starts getting, you know, whatever, that's going to be hard for me to react to, okay? But on the other side, I think the key is that people need, if they can deliver a cogent, you know, reasonable, sometimes you have to wait a little bit. You don't corner, you, you tend not to poke at a wounded animal, right? I mean, uh, you know, you got to be, you got to be smart about how you deal with your dissent. But I have no, there's nothing I have less respect for than the people who do not have the guts to dissent when they know they should. When they know they should. But how you do it matters a lot. Okay, so I, I if, please, you're humans, we, we're smart people. If you have an opinion that, especially if you think something's wrong and you don't speak up, all you have to do is read the CABE report on the loss of Columbia or on the loss of Challenger and you'll see exactly what not speaking up will get you. Prob possible loss of life, let alone loss of mission. So speak up, but do it in a respectful, thoughtful, well-timed, proper environmental way. Jacob, any other questions? Otherwise, I would like to thank all of you for coming and uh, for letting one guy uh, share his view of life, a career against a bunch of uh, guidelines with one really hard rule. Thanks a lot.